Octave Leap. Innovation, regeneration, and human optimization. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Octave Leap live stream. Wasn't here last week, as some of you know, because I was working on my documentary called The Everything Bubble, which ties into this theme today. But it is its own thing, and it's a much larger concept. And I tried to do a live, a live stream on it two weeks ago, but I didn't feel 110% on it. So I'm going to actually make a documentary. That was sort of the, uh, the feeling that I got afterwards, because it really needs a very specific representation. And hello from... Hello, Beanie. Hello, uh, Pippa. Hello, everybody that's tuning in for this uh, live stream today. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, it feels really good to be back after a little bit of a break. And we're here to talk about um, rooibos. Yeah, we have lots of rooibos tea here in South Africa. Um, so I know what that's like. So today we're going to talk about uh, Bitcoin, the canary in the coal mine is what I've called this. And right now what's happening is... as Many of you know, if, especially if you follow my work, Bitcoin has crashed. Crypto is down pretty good. And a lot of people, including people that are much more experienced and were way more full-time than I was, have left crypto for good. Uh, in some cases, you know, it goes to show that when you get too comfortable with something, uh, you start to slack. And when you, you slack in certain ways, um, it can have uh, bad consequences. And a lot of the I'll explain to you what happened with crypto and why people get wiped out 100%, even though Bitcoin still just comes down, drops, and then it's probably going to rebound. But basically, I, I'm, you know, a lot of people think it's a good idea to leave crypto. And this is the way that markets are designed. They're basically designed to make you think that it's going to keep going up when it's at the top. And so people buy in at the top and they FOMO in. And basically, you've got only downside and not much upside left. And when they're at the bottom, it makes people too scared to buy and, and seize a good opportunity. And the other thing I want to talk about too is I want to ask the question is what's happening just isolated to crypto or is this thing that Bitcoin went through indicative of something much, much larger out there? Because it's not looking pretty out there. Not at all. Uh, you know, the stock markets were rallying post COVID money printing artificially stimulating the economy with the last remaining trick, you know, printing money. Uh, I, I was, uh, I came across some figures in the last week. Globally, governments of the world over the last 22 years have printed $185 trillion. Now, the interesting thing is we didn't really notice it. There, you know, sure, house prices went up, goods and services went up, you know, inflation happened, but the tech evolved so much that the tech should have created deflation because it made everything more efficient. But we didn't see deflation. We didn't see prices going down. We only saw prices going up because the efficiencies from the tech were caused by the fact that there's now more money that's just basically flooding the economy and the market. And um, printing money is basically the last remaining trick to keep this artificial reality, economic reality that we live in, alive. And it's not working anymore. And this is what we're seeing this year. And it's terrifying because people who should know what's going on actually don't know what the, what's going on. They're basically saying the money printers, we turned them on and uh, we, we've turned them off. Sorry, they were on for a long time, printing way too much. We turned them off and we started to pull money out of the economy. But, oh, my God, inflation's running out of control. It's the worst it's been in 50 years. You know, what the heck's going on here? Nothing's working. And even a lot of investors are saying, oh, well, it's going to work eventually. Don't worry. And second half of this year, don't worry. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But I kind of think that they're um, in for a bit of a crude awakening. So what we went through with crypto was um, a little bit different. So crypto had been tracking very closely with the tech stocks ever since early last year when a lot of big money, institutional money that also invests in tech stocks and in the stock market got into crypto. So they treated crypto like they would treat a, a risky tech stock. And so when the NASDAQ, which is the index of, of tech stocks, went down, started to go down in uh, November or December last year, crypto followed with it. But of course, crypto went a lot further. 
And that was because of what happened with Terra Luna. And I've covered that plenty on my channel and it still breaks my heart because um, Terra Luna had been good to me for so long. It was such a good uh, investment and I really liked a lot of the protocols on there. Unfortunately, you know, there may have even been some shady dealings, but it was attacked. It didn't succeed after the attack and um it showed us that the ust stablecoin um couldn't survive as well as the the luna token as well so it actually created a death spiral so not only did luna die but it brought down 80 billion dollars worth of crypto and there were some serious um venture capitalist firms and crypto projects that were heavily invested in luna heavily invested in ust uh, Celsius and Three Arrows Capital, capital uh, come to mind. And basically what happened was uh, because they're so heavily invested that these giant entities, um, they actually went insolvent. And so they locked users' funds in, in, a, in an attempt to bail themselves out, creating more fear and panic. Um, and as Luna collapsed, it sort of brought down the crypto market. And the way that crypto is structured is when there's a sell-off, it starts to hit certain levels where the smart contracts automatically sell off or they liquidate positions. So automatically somebody will wake up if the, if the price drops and their position will be liquidated and their Bitcoin or their whatever they're holding will be sold off automatically um, because they were um, invested on what's called leverage. In other words, they're borrowing money and the value of their loan exceeded the value of their collateral. And so then there's more selling off that happens automatically. So it creates this sort of compounding effect, this real snowball rolling down the hill. And it is sort of the, the dark side of crypto, the amount of leveraging and the amount of hubris and arrogance that people have and greed, essentially, to leverage themselves up so much uh, that when things naturally go through a cleansing process, um, that it makes it a lot worse. And so what we're seeing or what we saw in crypto was a lot of traditional finance, a lot of centralized entities trying to pose as decentralized. And of course it looks good. It looks fine. And nobody notices when everything's going right. But when things start going wrong, that's when you can't hide it anymore. And so when Terra Luna collapsed, it sort of became like a, a light was shown in the room and, you know, everybody was sort of caught red-handed for whatever they're doing. Like Celsius um, was heavily invested in them and, and, you know, maybe taking people's money and, um, you know, getting yield from risky places and sort of giving them yield or borrowing or three arrows capital was, you know, they had all these weird loans going in different places. And so it, it wasn't as solid as they made it seem. And so when these large um, centralized organizations and venture capitalists, they go insolvent, there's more selling off that happens because their creditors want some sort of repayments, so then they have to sell off their assets in order to do this. So it creates more selling pressure. So basically crypto got hit really, really hard. However, I, first of all, I don't think it's over, unfortunately. I think we're going to get a little bounce. I think things are going to get, we're going to get a bit of relief. Um, but I think it's also a, um, a shot across the bow, a warning shot for what's going to happen with the larger global economy. So if you went through, if you're in crypto and you went through some pretty rough emotions over the last few months, uh, consider that your dry run, your practice run for what's going to be unfolding on a larger, um, stage, because the big picture is we live in a world that is based off of artificial stimulate stimulation economically. It should have collapsed in 2008, but they started to get really risky. They went all or nothing with um, money printing. And I liken it to this. It's like, if you have somebody who's at a party and they've drank too much and it's like, you know, three in the morning or four in the morning, you know, it's pretty bad. And you know, they're going to have a hangover the next day, but you should get them to sleep. You should give them some water, say, okay, it's time to, you know, cool you off and, and, and put you to sleep. But the, you don't do that. You say, okay, we're going to keep you up. We're going to keep you partying. So you pour them a, a Red Bull and you pour them some Jagermeister and then the sun comes up and then they realize, oh, I can't go to sleep now that the sun's up. And there's sort of this like zombie, like half stimulated, half completely toasted uh, creature. And they're, you know, absolutely destroyed. That's our economy right now, essentially. It's sort of too late to try to save it. And um, 
housing stocks, crypto bonds, the whole thing's about to get a harsh reset. And that's not really um, news to many people that follow my work or of course, follow the work of uh, Jacqueline Oracle girl, because you know, this has been said and you know, there, we kind of also know about this little thing in the background that's called a great reset. Um, but prior to the great reset, we're going to likely experience something uh, well, that I call the popping of the everything bubble. And I'll explain this in greater detail when the documentary gets released. So make sure you're signed up to my Telegram group. Um, that's the best way to stay uh, informed of any releases I have. I always put stuff on the Telegram group. It's a broadcast group. Um, the link should be in the description below, but maybe Micah can also post the link to uh, Telegram there. They're perfect. So yeah, uh, stay up to date. I hope to have it done in a few weeks. I'm just going into the studio. We've been having some gnarly power outages here in Africa uh, lately, like sometimes nine or 10 hours a day without power. So it's been hard to do anything um, that involves uh, technology. So we'll see, but I hope to have uh, most of the filming done this week or next week. So within the next few weeks, it should be out. But it's really important um, because it sort of, gives the the overview of where we're at and it's not meant to scare you i mean it is kind of terrifying to look at but you have to realize too that this whole thing we're in right now is much bigger than any of us and even though we've been a part of this economy and a part of this system to a degree um we can't really reject it or um you know basically surrender to it it's, so, it's sort of like it's going to happen it's going to have an effect but you know hoarding and trying to you know be too much of a prepper isn't really going to work because that's sort of just the old mentality, the old way of thinking about it. The best way to work with this is to basically look at the thing, you know, process the fear, um, let the fear sort of take out those parts of you that we're, we're habitually holding on to, that we're clinging to something um, because those parts of us need to go. And that's our best uh, strategy for moving forward is the more deconditioning we can do, the more we can listen, the more we can be present with life in the way that it needs us to be present, the greater chance we have of navigating these times. And it's going to be fairly fluid. Um, you know, we're, we're all going to have, we're all going to go through our own trials and tribulations in our own life. Um, and there's very, 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 uh, you know, great chance this will happen, but it also may not happen in that way. Uh, the reason why I think it's, it's both uh, an internal conviction. Also too, I'm looking at uh, a couple indicators, one one of which is astrological and the other, of course, is um, uh, more uh, e economic, fundamental, technical analysis. So I'm going to jump in here and show you a little bit about where we're at here. So this here, this little picture that looks like a hockey stick, as we often say in Canada, is this, this is the Bitcoin chart that was going crazy, but it's not Bitcoin. It's actually the printing of uh, US dollars. Now, the US dollar is the global reserve currency right? So everything in the world in international trade is priced in US dollars, whether it's people, uh, it's Saudi Arabia dealing with China, they're still buying oil in US dollars. So if there's more US dollars in the world, there's more global inflation, period. And when it goes like this, and money gets printed, that money has to go somewhere. And where does it go? Um, it went into the tech stocks. It's very obvious that it went into the stock market. So this is what we call the COVID crash. When COVID got announced, there was a big sell-off. And then you can see how much it deviated from the actual growth line. So this is the actual like growth line right here of the NASDAQ, of the tech stocks. And it's you know much more modest. And you can see how far we've deviated. And when it deviates like this, you have to remember the whole economy and everybody and all the businesses in the world, they get comfortable with this. So had it just grown slowly, we would have been fine. But when it grows rapidly like this and it has to correct, even if it corrects back to here, you know, it's still losing, what is this, like 50% uh, of its value, which is like a catastrophic crash. And it might even go further than that. Actually, it likely will. So this money printing flowed into tech stocks. It also flowed into real estate. So global real estate in places like Canada, in two years, the house price has doubled. That's not normal. That's not cool. And then now we've got raising interest rates. So people were FOMOing into houses based on low interest rates back in 2020. And now the interest rates are going up. So what we're going to see is the housing bubble potentially beginning to pop. And that's good for some people because there might be some cheap housing available soon. Um, but for people who bought recently, 
you know, they have to be very careful, especially if they're already stretched thin paying their mortgage, because as these interest rates go up, so does the mortgage payments. And if people are stretched thin to pay based on low interest rates, when the interest rates increase, there's a much higher chance that people, they can't pay their mortgages. And it then creates a 2008-like effect where people start def defaulting en masse. Um, interestingly enough, you know, there's a lot of uh, comparisons right now to the uh, the global financial crisis in 2008 and the dot com. Um, basically, you know, a media analyst here is saying that an American shockwave will l l spread globally like the global financial crisis did. So again, it has to do a lot with America for the simple reason that number one, they're the the largest economy in the world, but number two, that U.S. dollars are the global reserve currency, and. I'm not alone in, in, in this analysis either. You know, September or October, I expect a massive move down AK crash, maybe full capitulation. I was already expecting housing to move down heavily in the area, as well as though it should already be dropping. Just watch. So this is somebody doing some technical analysis on the tech stocks and the NASDAQ chart. And then another little thing here is the dollar index. So we just came back to levels we were in during the dot-com bubble. Um, so basically... The Dixie is how much money is in dollars, not in housing, not in stocks, not in crypto. So people are going back into dollar, the dollar, even though it's inflating like crazy right now. And so that isn't rational thinking. That isn't logical thinking. That isn't, um, so, you know, these aren't people that are holding a high frequency. This is people panicking. And when people panic, the best thing for us to do is not to panic, obviously. Uh, panic doesn't lead to uh, anything productive. The other thing I've realized too is if we do what most people do, we're going to end up like most people. And you know, most people got you know triple jabbed and got their free donut for it. Uh, so I don't really uh, agree with following most people, and I never really have. Um, so when I see other people panicking, for me, I get interested in in kind of countering that, doing something differently. Um, so, you know, a lot of people losing interest in crypto, I became more interested in crypto. And actually, I, I learned, I'm like, wow, this is an amazing time to be in crypto. And I'll explain why uh, towards the end. Uh, but now, so I've kind of looked, taken a look from the more fundamental technical left brain approach. Uh, now I want to take a look from the astrological or the more right brained approach. And uh, one of uh, Vanessa's very good friends, Gary Cousins, he runs a YouTube channel. There's not many videos on it, but he's called Star Magi or Magi. I don't know how you say that word. I'll, I'll, I'll just post it here. So Star Magi. I had some trouble finding it, so I had to type in uh, Star Magi Astrology on, um, on YouTube. But he's got like four videos, and they're really, really good. Um, but one of the videos, you know, and I, I'm – taking a little bit, I'm borrowing a little bit from his interpretation here. So I want to give him full credit for this because when I saw this, it sort of knocked my socks off and it agreed with a lot of these other technical analysts. So I'm going to show you sort of what he was saying. And uh, for those of you not involved in astrology, I apologize, but um, <laughs> this is basically the NASDAQ uh, birth chart versus the transits coming up this year. And there's three transits happening. Uh, one is in September and last till November. Another one that's of importance is happening in the beginning of no November and last until December. And then there's one happening here in November, lasting until March. Now, one of these, uh, which is Saturn conjunct the sun, this one here is Jupiter opposed Pluto, and this one here is Uranus conjunct Saturn. Uh, both, any one of these would be a potential like um, uh, negative effect. But when you have three of them coinciding, it's almost giving a perfect storm. It, it really increases the likelihood of something happening to the stock market. So I just want to emphasize that crypto has sort of gone through its fall. Uh, it might have lower, it might be going a little bit lower, but it won't be, be because of crypto. It'll likely be, be because of the correction uh, that really needs to happen with the tech stocks. And looking at the astrology, the astrology is definitely pointing to a higher likelihood of that happening between September and December of this year when these major transits coincide. So the first one is Saturn being right over top of the NASDAQ's sun placement. And the second one here is Jupiter pulling or, or in opposition to Pluto. It's so Jupiter's expansion. And Pluto, of course, is death, rebirth, metamorphosis, 
plague totalitarianism. It's sort of a really harsh type of um, transformation. So when they're pulling apart, you know, it's literally sort of pulling apart the fabric of the world. I think of it like an earthquake. And here we have Uranus conjunct natal Saturn. And Uranus is like the lightning. I, I think of Uranus Saturn as like the tower card in the tarot, where it's like a bolt of lightning hits, strikes the tower, and the tower sort of like falls to pieces. So this is saying a lot. This story is pointing to a lot. And again, I'm not saying this out of any fear at all. It's, it's sort of like for me when I saw this, I'm like, this is fascinating. Because I know that if I live at a frequency where this um, I'm not completely absorbed by this and completely devastated by this, um, then, um, you know, it, it becomes interesting and there's this sort of process that begins to work within me. So again, being prepared is more of a frequency thing. It's not so much, um, you know, going out and doing things or panicking and definitely take this information without fear or have the fear and process it now well ahead of time. So if any physical events occur, You've already been through it. You've already had your dry run, your practice run. Anybody in crypto, you know, that's that has been pretty hard hit by the Bitcoin crash says, you know, I've been through it once. I've, I, I know what this is like. My nervous system has adjusted. Moving on here, um, I want to show you now, Bitcoin has a very interesting signature. So the story continues. Here we have Pluto conjunct Jupiter. Now, Gary had something really interesting to say. He studied the chart of a lot of very, very wealthy billionaires, and he calls this the billionaire mark. So when uh, Pluto conjuncts natal Jupiter, he says that is sort of the, the kingmaker in a way. And so in 2023, um, between eight, uh, about March 2023, you can see it's in the highlighted one here. I know you can't see my mouse pointer. Uh, in December, um, Bitcoin is going to step into its own. So what I'm interpreting from the story is that we're probably going to see Bitcoin initially going down in the fall with the rest of the equities markets out there. That's very likely. I'm not saying it's 100%, but it's a probability both from a technical standpoint and an astrological. And then I feel like early next year, we're going to start to see people saying, hey, you know, we can't be repeating the old system with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's going to take off on its new uh, trajectory. And there's a great potential for it to actually decouple from equities, from the traditional financial system, from centralization, and basically become its own financial system. And this is interesting, too, because this also coincides with when a lot of developments for CBDCs are poised to be implemented full scale. So I strongly believe... And I mean, I'm obviously changing my belief whenever new information is presented. And it's always fluid. This is right now me looking down the road. I can see probably going to have some pretty big shakeups in the economy towards the end of this year, um, which will affect Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin will next year begin to rise to its own. And towards the end of the year, it's very likely that we see quite a rally, but in a completely new way. It might be that there's now regulation and Bitcoin's banned in the future and that you know people are trying to be forced into central bank digital currencies as they're also trying to escape into Bitcoin to preserve their economic sovereignty. So for me right now, this is an amazing time to be in crypto. When everyone else is panicking and the deals are there, I'm trading, I'm swing trading, I'm building up my Bitcoin portfolio uh, and, and portfolio of other important cryptocurrencies in preparation for this. And even if this doesn't happen, having crypto is great because crypto allows us to transact in a new way regardless of whether the old system collapses or not. It doesn't really matter. It's sort of a win-win situation, especially if you enjoy it. If you enjoy anything, then you're always winning. So that's um, taking a look at sort of a, a completely different perspective. And if you need a little bit of context, I, I believe it was um, JP Morgan who said, you know, Millionaires don't use astrology, but billionaires do. And what he's saying is that, you know, people who are sort of wealthy through playing the game of the system, they just play the game of the system. They just, you know, act in certain ways and sort of climb the ladders and all this kind of stuff. But the real sort of um, ones behind the scenes understand the esoteric nature of reality, you know, and this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, but the, you know, there's sort of higher fr frequency beings that are positive and negative out there, right? There's certain beings that are doing sort of work to um, 
to, to liberate humanity and they're using natural law and they're using esoteric principles positively. And then there's other people out there that are using these principles against humans. You know, they're showing them dark symbolism. They're obtaining their consent, consent through manipulative ways. And they're forcing humans into this uh, devolved, um, you know, degenerate, uh, compliant way of living. And we see this in, in culture around us. And I will be covering this in the Everything Bubble documentary. So you don't want to miss this documentary when it comes out. And it will probably just be posted on my channel too. Actually, it will be. So it'll be freely available for people, which is great. Um, so, you know, that, so what I say is, okay, well, you know, let's play with the highest frequency we can. And, you know, I certainly don't want to control people. I want to liberate and I want to see the world thriving and shining. And, and I want to really embrace this new um, age of innovation that's upon us. And I think that, you know, the only way that can happen is if each one of us plug in in the best way possible. And for me, <clears throat> I love doing that through esoteric sciences and arts, but I'm also very practical. I like building, I like resources, I like cryptocurrency, I like trading. So therefore, you know, I like working with crypto and I enjoy talking about macro economy. And I love talking about this financial stuff because the financial system is the primary mechanism, you know, that's at the heart of all of our imbalances, of all the reasons why we don't come together and form our own communities, why we never establish something outside of the system, because it all relates back to the wounds from the financial system. So if we understand it and we understand how to navigate that in a more healthful way, we liberate ourselves. Um, so I'm just going to uh, jump back in here. And I know I'm, I'm kind of going between uh, left brain and right brain today quite a bit. And it's, it's pretty fun, actually, I got to say. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to show you, this is the, the Bitcoin chart. And some of you are like, uh-oh, charting. Well, this is price and this is time. And so here we are, July the 5th, 2022. And you can see, you know, Bitcoin has gone down quite a bit. In fact, from its peak back in, uh, when was that? November 12th or 11th, it's gone down, um, you know, 75% almost. And right now it's sort of hanging out at the all-time high level from 2017. And, and, you know, you can see that it really has a lot of gravity. This is a psychologically important number for a lot of people because Bitcoin has never crossed below a previous all-time high from, a, from an old cycle. So the first time it's ever happening. But Bitcoin has also never existed during a time where there's a larger uh, macroeconomic crisis going on, which is the collapse of many markets around the world um, and uh, many economies that are uh, currently in a very rough place right now. My personal um, feeling, and this is based on astrology, based on technical analysis, is that we should, though, maybe see a little bit of lower price action, but potentially see a little bounce. And when this happens, when, when this bounce occurs, a lot of people get, and that's a little bit too far forward in time, so I'm going to just take that. I think it's going to be more like this. And when it happens, a lot of people are going to get excited, and the euphoria is going to begin to return to crypto, and people are going to think it's going to keep going. But likely what we're going to see, based on the astrology, based on some of these other indicators, is that the stock market goes down. And when that happens, crypto might go down with it initially and hit these levels here. This is another very important uh, strong level to hold around 12,000. It might even dip a little bit lower in an oversale. And then crypto might go through sort of a period like this. And towards the end of next year, when it comes into its own, goes into something like this and then begins to take off in ways that pr we can't even imagine right now. So the interesting thing that I've learned is that we can um, make profits based on these relative moves. It doesn't look like a big move from here to here, but what I've been doing is I've been trading some of these altcoins like Ethereum, Avalanche, Matic, Link, and getting like 10% uh, or 15% moves per day and trading within that range, but in and out, and then taking the profit into Bitcoin. So I'm stacking my Bitcoin. And so even though this is a very small movement, um, this uh, swing trading or shorter term trading is allowing me to accrue more Bitcoin. And there's another uh, trading technique called shorting, where you follow the price of the coin down. And you might think, well, that sounds kind of nefarious. You're betting on it going down, but you know it can't just go up forever. 
you know, it's sort of like, that's like positive vibes only, you know, you can't just have something that goes up forever. Otherwise everybody gets rich. Every moron gets rich out there and nobody learns the art of, um, basically like cleansing yourself. It's, you know, this is a cleansing when it has to go down because it, with it, it brings all the toxicity, all the leverage, all the greed out of the system. And in many ways, this is a purification for Bitcoin by going through this purification by fire. And so when I see this happen, I'm basically a fly on the wall and I want to follow it. And I want to be there because I believe in it. So I'm not going to leave it. Um, you know, and interestingly enough, to support this idea, and I, I just saw this today, by the way, but Mr. Coin Bureau, who's, uh, he's really great. If anybody knows Coin Bureau, he, he's, he's quite popular in crypto because he's got a very mild British accent and he doesn't get too uh, worked up about anything. He really strives to present things neutrally uh, and simply in the crypto world. So that's sort of his um, real skill in crypto. But he's saying that there's a couple milestones happening this month. So if inflation figures for once, uh, they're going to be released on July 13th and they've been going up in exceeding expectation, but if they come in lower than expected, crypto could rally. If the Fed's interest rate raise announcement on July 27th, if it comes in a little bit lower, crypto could rally. If the GDP figures for quarter two, which will be released on the 28th, uh, come in and, and the, um, the growth is better than expected, that might have an impact on what crypto does. So yes, sure, it could crash, but there's three uh, important dates that are happening this month that could begin to turn this tide, that could begin to give us a little bit of a, re a relief rally for the short term. And I think um, the astrology is also supporting that as well. It's also saying there's some um, harmonious trines. I didn't get into it because I want to kind of keep this show brief, but there is some harmonious period over um, between July and early to mid September happening with cryptocurrency and with the stock market. So, you know, we could get a, a, a little bit of a pause, a little bit of a respite so people can enjoy their summer. But if people are interested or working with cryptocurrency, we need to keep in the back of their mind of our minds that we shouldn't get too comfortable or too euphoric. We shouldn't get too emotional about any of this stuff. Really. We, we simply need to um, look at the indicators, look at what the indicators are telling us and moving accordingly. And that's really why, I, I love this stuff. I love it fascinating. I find it's like a discipline for me. It keeps me so disciplined in life to follow this and not get emotional about it. And uh, for many people that um, you know, I've, I've exposed to trading and I've shown them trading and I've, I've talked about trading and even um, taught trading in a few instances, you know, I, I tell them very specifically that you can do the exact same thing that I do and get wrecked if you don't have the internal state figured out. So trading in many ways refines our inner state. And that's what I love about it. That's why I do it because it actually makes me more disciplined. It makes me more centered and whatever it is. I mean, you know, it could be that it could be um, horseback riding. It could be dancing. It could be painting, whatever it is. It just happens to be something that maybe is a little bit more odd or a little bit more left brain, but I actually find it to be an art form and I find it to be very beautiful. And if anybody wants to, um, try it out and, and see what I'm talking about and potentially, you know, learn to trade wisely. I'm actually putting on a workshop that I want to uh, let everyone know about. So it's a workshop on July 16th from 4 to 7 p.m. And if you can't make the workshop, there's going to be a replay. All the resources will be available. But it's basically for people who are feeling overwhelmed right now and don't know what to do with their crypto. They may have held it too long, but there's a part of them that wants to rebuild. And so I've been having a lot of fun trading but you don't have to trade every day. You can trade two to three times a month. And so if you go to my website and Michael will put the link up, you can register. And the, the nice thing too, is I, I've made it uh, by donation with a minimum contribution. So there's a minimum contribution of $45 and it goes up from there. So a lot of really, really good information here on the psychology, really going and explaining trading. I wouldn't say it's for people who are 100% beginner with crypto and never have done crypto before. But if you know, if you have got an exchange account or you've put money into a wallet, you're at a stage maybe where you can learn to trade. But, you know, if you never touched crypto before, I wouldn't advise this workshop. It is for somebody who has a little bit of experience with crypto. But I'll go into the different styles because ultimately 
what I'm really looking to do during this time is educate on how to trade and then be able to let people know what I'm doing, how what I'm trading. But before I can tell you what I'm trading and what trades I'm taking, you need to know how to trade, how to risk manage yourself, how to have the right psychology and state of being for doing such a thing. Because I feel like we're there's a very narrow path forward and there's sort of distraction on both sides of the chasm right now. And for people who really believe in a better future, we kind of have to traverse this next uh, shaky period in history. You know, we went through the whole medical thing over the last few years and we see how that turned out. You know, uh, many of us who stood with our morals, stood with our beliefs and our how we felt about things, we're now seeing the world's opening up. It's shifting. That's not such a big deal anymore. But now we're staring at, into the, the abyss of sort of this economic issue that needs to happen. This needs to be cleansed from the world. And it's going to be um, major no matter how it plays out. You know, our entire relationship with money, finances, the economic system, the uh, injustice in the world, uh, inequality is going to be coming up for review. And another important thing, and this has nothing to do with finances, but, you know, since the 60s, we've heard about this age of Aquarius. Well, the age of Aquarius very much represents this new, new era of innovation, this new era of advanced technology and humans finally treating each other with humanity, compassionately, having some intelligence brought back into the equation. And this is very much is that positive future that many of us dream of and feel of, feel for. And it's sort of been coming in in, in smaller increments. But starting in 2023, Pluto leaves Capricorn. And when it was in Capricorn, it was literally, Capricorn represents the old system. So Pluto being the metamorphosizer was transforming the old system. So of course we saw all the darkness, all the control, all the underlying elements of totalitarianism coming up for review. And now it's transiting into Aquarius. And it actually is going to move retrograde back into Capricorn a little bit before it stays in Aquarius in 2024. Um, and that lasts for 20 years. But when Pluto moves into Aquarius, that right there is going to be a very powerful signaling of the age of Aquarius. That's where we're going to start to see a lot of these Aquarian principles really take root. We're going to start to see the emergence of technologies that we didn't even know were possible, that have been, that are there, that are ready to go and be deployed, start to integrate. And of course, you know, there's a part of us that's scared of things like, oh, you know, bio, what could the biotech companies dream over, you know, nanobots and AI and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, there's going to be, it all depends on the people behind it and using it. And so if we contribute to building a better world, we can see this technology go and be used in an amplified way for regeneration, for bringing people together, for enhancing the human experience as opposed to suffocating it and enforcing compliance. So this whole thing though, this last dying breath of the old system, it has to sort of be expunged. And, you know, anybody in crypto who dreams of a new sovereign system, you know, we took a, a bit of a fall recently with the collapse of Luna and the uh, spread of that contagion that we're still processing now. However, that isn't the end. That's there basically to shake out, you know, um, to really test everybody's um, resolve. And so maybe you were, you're spun out for a bit, but I, I do encourage you to get back in. I do encourage you to not lose sight of um, economic sovereignty and uh, the ability to have your own system and be your own bank in the face of uh, what will be a compliant, rich um, proposal that's coming directly at us from the old system as it gives its less last gasps, gasps. You know, folks, people often think that this is going to be over in a year or two, but uh, in the work that I've done and the research and the things that I've seen, we're potentially in this for the next five to 10 years. So buckle up. And um, that's why we need to just keep moving in these directions that feel good or feel right, as opposed to trying to wait this thing out. If we try to wait it out, um, it's going to get very uncomfortable and it's going to bring that stuff up anyway, but we won't feel as prepared to face it as opposed to us just saying, okay, well, no matter how long this takes, I'm in it. I'm committed. I'm here. Anyway, that is my spiel.
Uh, and if you're interested uh, in sticking around with me, please join the Telegram group. I've got a lot of amazing stuff coming up. Um, I'm trying to really create uh, as much as possible because I want to participate in a cultural revolution, a revolution of music, a revolution of thought, a revolution of culture. Um, you know, I've got a team of people that we're building beautiful, immersive worlds that people can plug into that are regenerative. And there's so much happening right now in spite of all the BS going on out there. And so I just ask you that if you're interested in this stuff, come along for the ride. And if you have friends, send them along too, because I try to make everything as accessible as possible to everyone. And of course, there's stuff along the way, like a trading workshop that I do, that, you know, there is, I do ask for uh, a contribution because at the end of the day, you know, I've got people I work with, I've got expenses and the people that feel inclined to come out to these things and support through monetary efforts, I'm truly appreciative of. So thank you. All right, let's see what we got in the comments. Okay. So I got a comment, a uh, question here from Susan. Hi, Dave. Can you speak a little bit about if you want to be trading crypto or working on other ways with crypto? How do you deal with the fact that you have to sit a lot of the time behind a screen? Well, you don't, actually. That's a misconception a lot of people have uh, because they think that everybody needs to be a day trader. And um, some people enjoy being day traders, and so they sit behind a screen a lot. Uh, there is something called overtrading where people trade too much. But um, that there's a, you know, there's a style of trading for everybody. And what I'll be explaining in the workshop is the three main categories of trading. And depending on it, whether you want to do it or not, and if it interests you, there are three different levels of commitment and information required and skill required. One level of trading is as simple as you put a little bit, you buy a little bit of Bitcoin at a certain time each month and you forget about it and you leave it. That's very easy. There's not much screen time involved. Five minutes per month. Then there's something called swing trading, where you might make two or three trades a month. And it just requires sort of uh, keeping an eye on things, a couple, maybe like an hour a week. And that's about it. An hour to a week tops. And then, of course, if you're in that third category of day trading and there's a lot going on and you're you're profiting off of very small movements, yeah, then, you know, it takes up more time. Then maybe you're putting in uh, anywhere from one to three hours a day. So you kind of pick what works for you because obviously um, if we're doing something that doesn't work for us, we're not going to be successful, period, with whatever we're doing, whether that's work, whether that's crypto. And, you know, and a lot of the time when I see people getting into problems with crypto, it's because they've taken on a strategy that worked for somebody else and they hoped it would work for them, but it doesn't work for them because it doesn't feel right. And it doesn't, um, yeah, they don't enjoy it. So what I've learned is presenting different things for different people, letting people experiment a little bit and figure out what works for them. So that was a good question though, Susan, because a lot of people ask that and that's very representative of where, what people are wondering. So anyway, um, if there are no further questions today, then um, I'd like to uh, give everybody a big thanks for joining me and for, um, oh, I do have one more question. Okay. So Kenai is asking generally, could we say buy around the full moon? Yes, that is uh, a very, very good time to buy. And I'll, I, I will be showing data around that in the trading workshop because I've actually calculated that for uh, a 52 week period. And I've actually proved, hey, you know, it's significantly better to buy at a full moon versus buying at a new moon or really any other time of the month. There is one other piece you can take without using any charts at all. And that's the fear and greed index. If you follow the fear and greed index and the moon cycle, you can actually have a very rock solid way of slowly over time buying into Bitcoin. And that might be the best way for a lot of people who are kind of scared of Bitcoin, you know, and scared of crypto, but want to have economic sovereignty, you know. And so what we're focusing on more, especially during this bear market, myself, Micah, Vanessa, some of the other educators in crypto revolution are ways that work for people who want it simple, want it easy and don't require much time, but are on the lower risk side of the scale. And of course, crypto isn't uh, lower risk. Nothing is risk-free these days. You know, even if you want uh, something in the system uh, that's that's safe, there is nothing that's safe in the system. I mean, if um, equity markets are going to come down, that means mutual funds may go down with them. And I'm not saying they will, but it's all looking a little bit shaky right now. So we have to be 
uh, rolling with the punches and sort of in this fluid rogue like way of living. And if, if you like that, if your personality matches it, it's a kind of a fun time to be alive. If you like stability, safety, and security, there's a bit of a stretch going on for you right now. Yeah, you're very welcome. I, I like right brainers. You know, a lot of the people that come out to these things, the Beanie saying this, um, uh, Beanie was saying, uh, thank you for making it. Uh, thank you from us right brainers for making it understandable. I've uh, that's been one of my personal um uh you know goals or aims is because I have a, I attract a lot of heart-based people and I realize how technical um you know investing in crypto and all this stuff can get but I also see how it can be artful and right brained as well. And so it's finding that beautiful balance of what's just enough technical information partnered with the, the 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 juicy side of it, the real um, uh, intuitive side of it. Petra, is there a chance that Bitcoin goes down that far that all coins go liquid and evaporate? At this point, <laughs> look, um, there's always a chance. And that, that's the thing. And as I won't lie, I mean, there's a chance that you know the uh, World Economic Forum gets their ways and you know um, snuffs out crypto, and we're you know left trading sticks and stones and uh, you know, jars of honey, like some people in my village uh, are choosing to do. They don't want to learn crypto. There's a guy, he's stocking honey in the basement. I think it's amazing. I think it's hilarious. He's like, this will be more valuable than any currency out there. So yeah, Bitcoin could go down. And that's why I'm being careful with these other coins, the altcoins right now. And I'm moving in and out of them. And I'm taking profits into Bitcoin. I'm even careful with stable coins. Now, after UST, I had way too much faith in stable coins. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people did. And now we're seeing really Bitcoin has been around the longest. Bitcoin is built differently. You know, Bitcoin wasn't established by a company. It was established by an anonymous person or persons as a direct counter or antithesis to the money printing that was going on in 2008, which is an exact replica of what's happening now. So in many ways, Bitcoin really holds the ethos of a decentralized, positive uh, future where price appreciates. Um, Tanya is asking, do you also have workshops for beginners? I just started starting to educate myself in crypto. Well, actually we do. We have educating with, um, what's it called, Micah? Can you, can you uh, type it in there? But Micah and uh, Vanessa, uh, my partner, will be running a workshop for women wanting to get into crypto. And it's really, really nice because it really takes things very slowly. And um, really, it has that feminine touch and that feminine essence um, that works extremely well for, uh, you know, alleviating some of the fears and apprehensions around that, empowering women financially. That will be the name of the workshop that's coming up in August. Again, if you join my Telegram group, you'll be informed of all of the happenings. Um, and you'll get to take that with uh, Vanessa and Micah. And that'll be such a beautiful way for you to learn in a very easeful and um, caring environment. You know, the stuff that I do, um, because I'm, a I'm quite a bit more advanced, I like working with uh, developing people that are kind of past that initial thing. You know, I, I'm kind of past the point of, you know, this is an exchange or this is a wallet. Um, and I, I want to move into more of the strategies and more of the, the cool things and, and making an art form out of it. And Susan says the workshop has a beautiful community. Uh, yeah, there's a large group of women that still chat and they're still sharing um, their feelings about prosperity and abundance that's still active now. And that's what I find about doing any of these workshops and courses that we run is that it creates such an amazing community that many of you are already a part of and plugged into. So anyway, thank you all very much for coming out today and for joining in. It's always a pleasure. And um, I will see everybody next week. Um, and uh, we're going to have some very lovely guests coming up over the next few weeks as I complete this documentary and as I put on uh, the wonderful workshop coming. I've also got a few more announcements, but one thing at a time. So I will see you all next week. Take care and goodbye. This is Octave Leap. Innovation, regeneration, and human optimization.